Hi, we'd like to welcome you to another in a series of webinars designed for departments of uh, transportation. I'm Terry Bills, the Transportation Industry Manager here at ESRI, and today I'm joined by Eric Rodenberg, a Solution Engineer on our transportation team. So today's webinar is focused on how ArcGIS can support you through the full snow fighting and snow maintenance life cycle. It might seem a little unusual to have this webinar in the middle of August, and I think today here in Redlands it's supposed to get to 90 degrees, but this is really the time of the year that you really need to be really doing some very serious planning for this coming year's uh, snow regime. So we'd like to highlight how you can improve your snow fighting operations, how you can better communicate your progress with the public, and ultimately how you can optimize your performance to save money and resources. The slides that you see here uh, will be available to you on the GeoNet group Departments of Transportation and we'll give you the link to not only that but other resources uh, at the end of the webinar. So to begin, when we say that the ArcGIS platform can support you through the full life cycle of snow fighting activities, this really includes starting at the initial planning stages. So how do you begin to do uh, routing and uh, planning for the routing ahead of major events? Uh, for cities, this often includes a plan of the major arterials, while for state DOTs, priority often goes to clearing the freeways through major cities and other heavily traveled areas. We have a number of uh, partners that provide those types of snow routing uh, solutions, as well as our own software can, can assist you uh, in doing those routing algorithms. Secondly, and an essential component to an effective snow fighting plan is the ability to monitor real-time weather changes and events. And obviously, many DOTs have their own ARWIS systems, but these can be supplemented with good weather forecasts and real-time monitoring of weather events. We have several weather services available uh, on our marketplace, and a number of these services can be configured to send you real-time alert messages and warnings. And central to an effective snow operations strategy is the ability to track your snow plows and to pull critical information back into your operations center. And increasingly, this information includes not just the location and the heading of the plow, but other key information such as whether the blade is up or down, how much material is being spread, and where. Not only is this information the centerpiece of your ability to effectively monitor your operations, but when archived, gives you a great resource to use analytical tools to understand how you could be more effective in the future. And then finally, how do you communicate, how do you effectively communicate with the public? And really, the public wants to know where it's been plowed, where it hasn't. They want to be able to register complaints or place requests for service. And, being able to effectively communicate your progress through an easy to understand map interface is an important component of building trust and confidence in your efforts. And then finally, how, how can you use the information that you've collected to gain future insights? And, and we'll uh, show you examples of that in the, in the demos. So, much of what you're going to see today in the demo is really based on Esri's Snow Cop template and solution, which is available for free download from uh, our websites. And it really gives you the essential components required to implement these components into your snow fighting regime. We will give you the links to that and the bundled solution at the end of the webinar. But you'll notice that in a single view, you can see the location of your existing plows, understand any existing service requests, among other features. And central this, to this template is the ability to help you answer the question, were you meeting the expectations of your citizens and the media by providing them with the information they needed, when and where they needed it? And along that line, I did want to, again, uh, highlight the great work that Iowa DOT has done. Uh, they've actually developed a snowplow cost calculator 
uh, and we do give you the link there. Unfortunately, in the middle of August, you're not really going to see much, but if you go back to it in the middle of winter, you'll actually see that they actually calculate the cost of clearing the roadway for each segment uh, of the roadway. And it really is a really a great way of, of effectively communicating um, the costs and really the effectiveness of the DOT at managing snow um, in the uh, in the state of Iowa. So, and to that point, I think that, you know, increasingly there is a public expectation that your state or your city is going to be using the latest technologies to effectively manage snow in your communities and to use those same technologies to communicate your progress as well to the public. But rather than me talking about it, uh, let me turn it over to uh, to Eric, and uh, I know he's been anxious to <laughs> show uh, uh, a number of the new uh, components to the demo that he's developed. So, Eric, over to you. Yep. Thanks, Terry. All right, let's uh, go ahead and get started here. So uh, today I'm going to show you uh, three demonstrations. There are five demonstrations I have, but I I'm not going to be able to get through all of them in the time we have today. So. I've gone ahead and recorded everything I put together, every demo that I've got, and I'll share a link with you at the end where you can find them along with, uh, of course, this is being recorded as well. So um, the first demonstration I want to get into today is the snow out, the snowplow activity uh, dashboard. And this is basically the snow cop uh, demo that, that Terry mentioned to begin with. And um, this application is unique in that it allows me to track where my vehicles are at any given time, but we've gone ahead and we've taken it a few steps further uh, beyond what you typically think of. So let's go ahead and take a look at this application. So the first thing you're gonna notice here in, in just a second is um, we've got lots of different snow plows moving around and, and you'll see them come here in here in a minute. Um, but we've also are reporting on various bits of information about the plows, like um, like uh, how fast they're going. We can see um, we can see uh, where they're located. Um, we can see what they're spreading and whether or not the plow is up or down. So when we start to see these things moving around on the map. Um, we'll see a listing of all the plows that are currently out and I can click on any plow and, and zoom in on the plow. And um, you can see we've got a plow moving around here. There's a truck 1048 is currently out on the roadway. And I see some information about plow 1048 at the moment. I see that its plow is down and I see that it's moving at 34 miles an hour. And I also see that it is spreading. And I know that because this text uh, which lists the truck name, the amount it's spreading, and then if it's spreading any liquid, how much it's spreading of that. Currently, it's not spreading any brine, but it is spreading 500 pounds of salt. And if I click on the next button here on the spreader status, we can see the spreader is on, and we can see that it is spreading at 500 pounds per mile. If I open up the, um, if I open up my legend, I can see what these symbols mean. I know that the green dot means the plow is down and I see it's heading south at the moment. So all that information is available to me right out of the dashboard. And of course, if I want, I can pop up the plow and I can follow it and it's gonna just track it as, as it moves across the map. I can see what it last reported. I can see, uh, it's again, it's granular uh, material setting, 500 pounds per mile. I can see um, any other information about it, if it's dropping pre-wet, if that were turned on, I should be able to see temperature being reported. So each of these plows do have temperature sensors and those sensors are tracking how, how cold it is at any given moment in time. And we're also collecting a breadcrumb trail. So there's the last point uh, just to the north of, of where our plow is. Uh, and I can go back in time five minutes, 30 minutes, an hour. And all of this that you're seeing is completely configurable. So if you don't see something at the moment, it doesn't mean that you that, uh, or if you if you aren't seeing you know enough time back, we can configure that to be different. So if you wanted to collect the last 35 minutes, the last 45 minutes, the last two hours, we can certainly uh, configure that to be supported in this application. 
In addition, I'm pulling in ways alerts and I'm pulling in snowplow alerts. Hopefully we'll see a couple here go off in just a few moments. But um, basically what 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 the what the ways incidents refers to is we have the ability to see exactly how many incidents have occurred. And I'm looking back at the last 30 minutes now, and I can see all the ways incidents have happened in the last 30 minutes. And there's been about 124. And what's really nice about this is we can use this information to our advantage to help us um, to help us report better and to help us um, plan better. So if I see that an accident's occurred, I could notify notify a driver that they're approaching an accident and let them have an opportunity to get around that accident. Um, I can also report things like ice on the road. And when I see those ice reports, I might flag those and we might put a little extra emphasis on those section of roadway when we go out and treat it. Um, so there's quite a bit of valuable information that comes in from Waze and I can break it down by the type of incident so I can see, you know, how many accidents we've had, how many are traffic related incidents, how many uh, incidents are due to, to closed roads, maybe because of an accident. So we get a pretty clear breakdown of all the incidents. And now you might be seeing on my plow that there is a yellow dot, a yellow warning that's flashing. That indicates that there's some sort of issue. So if we go to the plow alerts, I can see that we've got an overspread alert, basically, which means the plow is dropping more material than it should be. And if I click on any one of these, it zooms me into the plow and I can see what that, what that alert is. And if I click on the alert detail, I can get some information about what's going on. So I can see um, what, what the issue is and it just gives me a little uh, brief uh, overview. In a few moments, we'll start uh, to see some alerts come in over uh, text message. Um, as these same alerts that come in on the application are also fired off via SMS messaging. So when, um, so a manager can be notified. And in fact, here we go right now. So I'll bring my phone in. We see this first line item is uh, no reply at esri.com. And if I click on that, we can see that uh, Plow 1062 is driving with its plow down and its current speed is 36 miles an hour. So typically, we don't want our drivers going over 35 miles an hour with their plow down. It creates a safety issue. Uh, it's hard on the plow and it's also hard on the road. So when a plow violates one of those warnings, we can fire off text messages. Now, in the case of overspread, I don't necessarily want to know if a plow has, you know, suddenly dropping 500 pounds per mile on uh, when it's recommended that it only drops 40 pounds per mile. And the reason that is the reason I say that is um, there might be instances where the spreader gets stuck, and there's a mode on a lot of these plows called blast mode. I can kick it into blast mode and it's get the spreader really moving, so it breaks up that chunk of salt that's stuck and uh, and moves the salt again. So when you put it into blast mode, there might be a, a very short period of time where you get a lot of salt on the road. Whereas when um, in, in normal cases, I really want to know when it's been going on for two minutes or more, maybe three minutes or more. And when that happens, I'll get alerts on my phone to let me know that, hey, you know, this issue has been going on for quite a bit of time. And, and those come in as these yellow warnings that you see. And then I can click on a warning if we move my phone out of the way. And um, I can see here um, that, you know, this plow is dropping 500 pounds per mile. Now, how do I know it's overspreading? Well, you'll notice these pink lines. Those are the snowplow routes. And each route has a label on it, NACL, MGCL2. The NACL is, of course, salt, and the MGCL2 is a magnesium chloride, which is a brine. And on this particular stretch of road, it was recommended that um, these plows drop, this plow drops 46 pounds per mile. Now, at some point, I am gonna get an overspread alert. And when I do, I'll show you what that looks like on the phone. But basically, I'm comparing this value on the plow, the plow's set rate, to what the MDSS recommendation was. And I'm comparing the two. And when the plow is on that section of road and it's dropping more for two minutes or more, it's going to fire off the alert for me so I can see where that issue is and, and act on it and call that driver up and say, hey, why don't you uh, pull back a little bit? 
if, if necessary. Um, the point of this is we're integrating with MDSS to allow us to better understand how we're meeting those demands in terms of what was planned versus what we're actually doing. So if, if the plan from MDSS states that 46 pounds per mile is recommended, and that's based on the forecast, it's based on weather conditions, wind conditions, um, precipitation, it's based on what the plow did the last time it was out. So there's a number of factors that goes into how that recommendation set. And I just wanna know, are we meeting that recommendation? And this is a great tool to help me meet those recommendations in real time. And now you can see what one of those alerts look, looks like. It tells me what plow is violating the rule, how many pounds it's applying, and, and how long it's been applying it for. So I know plow 1051, so let's go look at 1051. And I see 1051 out here, and I see what it's doing. Uh, it looks like it's taking a second to show up on the screen there, but um, I see what the recommendation is. I see that it's dropping 200 pounds. I'm not sure where he is at the moment here. Um, and I've got all my alerts telling me what he's doing. So I can call that driver up and I can say, hey, I need you to pull back. And, and, and that's really the point of this, is to make sure that we're, we're doing what we need to be doing and not more or not less. So I can do these alerts when a plow is dropping less salt. I can, um, and I've got it set up to where it's looking within 20% of the recommendation. If it's outside of that, if it's more than 20% where um, the recommendation is 46 pounds, 20% is roughly eight pounds. So if it's eight pounds over or under, an alert's gonna get generated after so many minutes. So this allows us to stay true to those recommendations and keep our drivers and keep ourselves on point in terms of what we're supposed to be doing performance wise. All right, so that's a little bit about the operations dashboard. Um, let's take a look now at some uh, some other analysis we can do, and this is post storm. I want to uh, not only do I want to see how we do in real time, but I want to look at I want to break down how we did, kind of a post mortem, if you will. I want to see how we did after a storm. How long did it take us to get the roads clear? How long did it take us? How much salt did we use? How much brine did we use? I want to see all of it in in one place. So. Um, I put together this post-storm analysis uh, workbook and insights for ArcGIS, and this is the workbook. And what it does is it breaks down for me what we did during a storm. And I took a storm that happened on uh, January 28th, and I looked at a couple of different things uh, these plows did, and particularly I looked at how many miles were driven with plow down. So uh, all this data came right off of AVL, and um, you know, one of the great things about the ArcGIS platform is not only can I show in real time where we're located and what we're doing, but I can offload all that data onto a data store that's designed for big data. So I can capture about 20,000 events a second, which is perfect for snow plows in real time and big data. Um, typically speaking, most plows will, will ping, will send a ping of where they're located Every 10 seconds is to as much as every two minutes, depending on the application. I know in some cases, the AVL vendor will collect the points continuously, but they'll send out a big burst of data every two minutes. And, and, and or in some cases, you'll just get a ping every 10 seconds for every truck. And uh, if you've got, you know, 10, uh, 1,000, 1,300, 1,500 plows, and you're capturing, a point every 10 seconds that's six pings per minute times a thousand plows times 24 hours or even 1500 plows you can quickly end up with a million points a day or more uh, and um, you got to have a place to store that data and the um, big data store allows me to do that and then a tool like like insights will allow me to go in and analyze that data quickly and gather results about particular times temporarily how we did. So that's what I'm looking at here. So here we have a plow and we're looking at each plow, truck 1067, truck 1062, we have truck um, 1061, and I see the length in miles that each truck drove as I hover over the bar. And if I select the bar, we're gonna just select an in and hone, it, hone in on that one plow 
and see how it did. So let's let's do that here. So there's Plow 1062, and we'll start to see all the other cards uh, focus in on what 1062 did. But uh, the main thing is, is it drove eight miles, and um, we see exactly what routes it drove. Actually, nine miles. Uh, we see exactly what routes it drove. So I know exactly what sections of road it covered with the plow down. I know what day of the week it was out. It was out on a Sunday. The storm hit on a Sunday. Um, scroll over a little bit there. So there you can see the day of the week. We can see the times when it was out. So it was out at 4 and 5 a.m. And then again at 5 and 6 p.m. And probably the most important card on this slide or on this in this workbook is the plow speed. Again, if you remember what I told you in the in the plow activity dashboard, the snow cop, um, we are looking at plows that are driving 35 miles or more with the plow down. And here, what this shows me is for a good portion of this trip, this plow was speeding. It was going 40 to 45 miles an hour. And I can actually click on the bar and figure out what section of road it was speeding on. And I can see exactly it was this major section of highway where it was going 40 miles an hour and then up to 45 miles an hour for most of the return trip. So I know where these plows were going too fast and where they weren't. And the point of this is we're trying to do better. We wanna make sure that we're not hard on the equipment. We're not replace, replacing equipment uh, as frequently as we maybe we, we could be replacing equipment way more frequently than we think because we're going too fast. This allows me to see that. This allows me to shine a light on where those problems may be. Now I can go back to this driver. And in fact, I can go to all these drivers where um, this guy was going pretty fast. Uh, 1061 was going fast. 1058 was going pretty fast. And uh, 1047 was going really fast. When you look at the sections of road it was on. Uh, 1048 was the only one, I'm sorry, that was 1047. 1048 was the only one who was under 35 miles an hour for the bulk of their trip. Now, there are a few parts here where he was up to 58 miles an hour, but we don't know why. There might be, there might be a good reason why. Um, but for the most part, this is what I want to see. I want to see these main boxes under 35 miles an hour. And for a lot of these guys, I don't see that. So those are conversations I can have with those drivers in an effort to to keep the equipment as preserved for as long as possible and keep everything in good working order. Um, here's another workbook I wanna show you, and this deals with the, the granular material. So this is the spread rate and how we did spreading material. Now these green lines that you see on the map, they represent the MDSS recommendations again. So I took those same recommendations that we saw in the plow uh, dashboard and I overlaid them here with what my plows actually did so I can do a comparison. So if I hover over one of these green lines, uh, that's Wisconsin 248 and the recommendation was 100 pounds per mile. Here we have Wisconsin 248-1, that was 100 pounds per mile. Um, this guy that plow 1062 was driving on, Wisconsin 249 was 68 pounds per mile. So I wanna see what he did. So I'm gonna select 1062 focus in on him again. And um, what you'll see is what routes we treated um, and then how much salt we used. And again, this is a distribution um, of the salt we used. And what this means, this is the most important card here. And what this shows, I want to see this down around zero. Zero to one is where I want this guy to be. Uh, what this means is he was anywhere from three to almost six times the amount of salt required. So he was dropping a lot more salt than he needed to. Um, three times to, to six times more. So the recommendation was 68. He was anywhere from 300 to 500 pounds per mile. And that's too much. So this shows me exactly what all these drivers did. And almost in every case, these drivers were too high. Uh, we have one driver who was up around 10 to 12, almost 11 times as much salt as necessary. So we can use this to help us improve. Now, they really didn't do this, but, um, but 
uh, because I took data sets from two different weeks and compared them purposely to just show you what these outliers would look like and how you would see these outliers in your own data if you were looking at your MDSS ratings and what your plows actually did you would want to see these numbers as close to zero as possible. In this case, they weren't, but it just gives you an idea of what you would see if they were if they were outside the, the norm and if they were outside of what they were supposed to be doing. Now, these drivers really didn't, they really did what they were supposed to be doing. I'm just showing you two different storms so you can get an appreciation for what the data would look like if somebody wasn't doing what they were doing and what you could expect to see. Um, this, this Insights workbook really does an excellent job of highlighting where those issues would be, though, if, if somebody wasn't doing what they were supposed to be doing. And um, this is an opportunity for us to improve, right? We can take how much material we're dropping and improve on our performance post-storm to get better the next time we go out and fight another snowstorm. <clears throat> of course, I have to be able to tell what we did as, a, as, a, as an organization, as a group, and what this shows is plow status by county. So I have two counties worth of data. I can see exactly how many miles we drove with plow up, how many miles we drove with plow down. I can also see how many miles we spread, so 45 miles in Rock County, about the two miles in Price County. Price County is well to the north. Um, this storm happened to hit the southeast corner of Wisconsin. Um, we can also see what days of the week we were most active. So I'll just slide over here and we can see what days of the week we were actively um, treating the roadways and what plows were active by the hour of the day. So I know exactly who was out when and uh, basically what they were doing. And then finally, I can look at this by route as well. So I roll all this data into the routes so we can look at and get an understanding for what routes were treated and how many how many miles. So I can see Wisconsin 249, for instance. Uh, we spread on 9.6 miles. We had plow down for 9.7 miles, and these are the hours of the day we treated. This matches up with that first slide, we or the first workbook where we saw plow down. Uh, we can look at the other routes as well and see exactly how, how much we did, what did we do. So we spread 5.2 miles and we drove approximately eight miles with the plow down. So this gives me a good understanding of what time of day we were out on the road and um, what days of the week we were out on the road treating it. So um, here we see we were out on Monday, Sunday, Monday, and Friday. And if I click on Friday, I can figure out exactly what hour of the day we were out. So this gives me that, that insight into what we did and when. So uh, really powerful, really powerful way of communicating how we performed post-storm. Um, and then of course I can roll up all of these, all these uh, dashboards, all these um, workbooks into standalone apps. I can roll them up into story maps and I can roll them up into open data pages so that I can share this out with a larger audience. So if I wanted to make a, a monthly report of how we performed week over week. I can take each of these dashboards I build week by week and publish out the workbooks right into an, a story map and include that story map with radar images and with screenshots of what we did to give somebody a sense of, here's how we performed in the month of January, or here's how we performed in February. And then at the end of the season, I can put it all together into a, to a, a seasonal report showing how many miles of road we treated and and, and what the cost was to us as an organization. All right. Um, the next demonstration I'm gonna show you is the granular material inventory. And this goes right along with, um, with snow operations. This is getting away a little bit from how the plows take care of the roads, but it is covering how we can track what materials are being utilized. So let's go ahead and take a look at this app. Uh, this is another operations dashboard, and everything I'm showing today is all 100% commercial off the shelf, configurable. I didn't write any custom code for any of the apps I built. Um, everything is commercial off the shelf. And what you're seeing here is, uh, is a granular material inventory app that shows how much material we have on hand. 
so I can see by garage exactly how much material is on hand and I can look month over month to see where we stand. So this is, uh, we're getting down towards the end of the season, we're into April and I'm gonna report my final report for each, for each county garage. Um, and I can look at this by county by county too, just to see. So it looks like we're waiting on Price County to report. So let's take a look at how that happens. And I'll leave this screen up so we can see it. And I'm gonna launch into my, um, we're gonna launch into my um, iPad. And let's launch into the granular material inventory. So this is a simple application that I can take out on my iPhone, my Android phone, my iPad, um, a window, an Android tablet. I could even take this out on a Windows PC, this app that I'm about to, to populate. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do a collection and you'll notice that it asks me questions. It's question based. So I can go in and I can start plugging in my information. Or if I do this, and I've done this once a month since October when snow season started, I can paste in the last answers I populated when I did this form back in March. So I'll go ahead and I'll do that. I'll paste in the last answer and it populates everything I need. The only thing I have to update is the height of the salt pile. So we took some calculations online for measuring salt in, um, in a salt barn. Um, and so all I need to do is populate what the height of the pile is. And, and you know, we've got the big yardstick against the back of the barn that I can use to basically eyeball how high that pile is. And we'll specify that that pile is four feet. And when I hit enter, it calculates the, um, the uh, approximate inventory for me. So I've got the calculation built into the form. So it just runs it and calculates what that actual or what that approximate tonnage is. And then all I have to do is basically populate a date and a time. So um, let's go in here and let's set this for April. Thirtieth and this this time is as good as any, and we'll specify that this is the last, the latest record, and we'll go ahead and we will um, send this now. Now, it, let's just say for all practical purposes, I'm out in the barn, and the barn's a little bit away from the offices where the Wi-Fi is, and I'm on an iPad that doesn't have Wi-Fi. That's fine. I can still do this report. I can I can go out with the report just like I've done. And if I don't have Wi-Fi, I can just send later and it'll hold it in my outbox. And you probably can see there at the bottom of my screen, I have a sent box, an outbox, an inbox, and a collection. And the outbox has a number one on the badge. So let's say, you know, if it takes me a minute or two to walk back to the office and I'm back on Wi-Fi. I can open up that outbox, call up that, that survey I just did. It's got all my information. So everything's preserved. All I have to do is uh, hit send now. So I'll go ahead and I'll do that. And it's gonna send that data. And you're actually gonna see in the background here, this, this dashboard's gonna update, but it's gonna go up because we haven't reported on April for Price County, but when we do, we get the updated report. So now all garages have reported in and we have our account. So we now know that we have 1,600 tons of salt remaining statewide across all the barns. And I can look at this and I can see month by month where we stand and I can see the current inventory that is now dropped like it should have. It was at 584 for March and now it's at 384 for April. So now we know exactly what we have and um, all, all garages have updated. So it could be that simple where you just go out with an app and basically give your estimate and submit that electronically and back at the central headquarters, the dashboard updates with all the current information and we, we know what we're doing. Um, I'm gonna show one more demo because we do have a few extra minutes here. Um, I'll show you how we might do that via the trucks. Um, so I'm gonna go into, um, another demo here called the vehicle operation report. And what this is, is a, an app to allow us to um, 
basically keep track of what our uh, what the status of our plows are in terms of their maintenance. Every time a plow goes out, we're required to inspect it. And when that plow comes back to the garage, we have to inspect it again to make sure that um, it's it's operating efficiently and it's got all the all the uh, supplies it needs when the drivers go out or the operators go out to do their uh, work. So I'm going to launch into another app. And um, we'll load it up and we'll get to it. All right. So while that's all doing its thing, I'm going to just minimize that. And let's take a look at the iPad one more time. So this time I am, I am an operator and I am responsible for um, maintaining the, uh, my, my plow. And um, we're going to, we're going to go ahead and um, we're going to, uh, start that that it, that uh, inspection that that vehicle inspection. So let's launch the operations record, and we're going to do a collection here. And the first thing you see that opens up is a barcode scanner. So I have there's a barcode under the door of each driver's side door as we get into the truck, and I'm just going to click on that that um, scanner and survey one two three literally turns into a barcode scanner at this point. Um, you see, I, all I have to do is get the barcode inside the red box, and I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So um, so you'll see here, it's, it might, looks like the um, iPad's a little bit slow to the draw. There it goes. So you're going to see it scan that uh, code, and now you'll notice under truck ID, it shows up as truck 01. And from here, I'm going to specify snow operations. And um, because Price County is chosen, it knows who my manager is. So I pick Chuck and then we're going to go ahead and specify the date that we're out. And then I'm going to do my preventative maintenance check. So this is what I do before I go out. And all the items that fail, I just have to mark them down. Everything's set to pass by default. So if I see something wrong, I just check fail. And um, when I submit, a, a work order is going to get created and the fleet manager is going to get notified and the mechanic is going to get sent out to figure out what's going on. Maybe in this case, replace a battery. Uh, but for, for our purposes today, we're going to pass the pre-inspection. So we'll just set that, that battery life back to pass. And then I'm just going to go through this list and um, let's take a look at the materials used. Actually, I'm going to log the equipment miles first. So let's start with our mileage. We'll say that the mileage is 65,380. We haven't finished the, the demo yet, but let's just say I put in see, 65,459 and I hit enter. It automatically calculates the total for me. So as I, as I plug in the starting mileage and as I finish my shift for the day and I plug in the ending mileage, it's going to calculate those those values for me. Um, I can also I also have a place to plug in what I hauled. So for instance, I can come in here and I can specify what I was loaded out with. So we'll say that I had salt, and uh, we had 10 tons, and we'll specify the units, and then um, we'll specify what road we were on. So I'm going to treat Wisconsin 13, and I could also load out that or specify that I was carrying. Brian as well. So this is a related table. So I can carry multiple records here. We'll specify Brian. We'll do a thousand gallons. And again, we are we're going to be on Wisconsin 13. And we can carry multiple records here. So the the great thing about this is it supports multiple entries and um, and it keeps track of what I carried. So you can possibly see here how we could tie this back into this to the granular material dashboard I just showed a minute ago. As 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 I'm going out with my load, I can keep track of what's being put in my truck, and all the trucks coming out of a garage can report that back to the material dashboard. And that's another way we can keep track of those totals. So rather than eyeballing a total based on a height of a pile, we can actually calculate how many truckfuls of, of 
salt we're leaving with to go out and treat roadways. Now that assumes that we're going to go back and any salt we have remaining, we're going to measure that when we put it back in the barn. Maybe you don't do that, but you might have to do that here in this case. But anyway, um, again, just like before, when I'm done, I can send later because I'm going to have to come back when I when I come back to the garage and I do my 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 um, post uh, post vehicle inspection. I got to come back and open this up anyway. So we could send later, um, but we'll go ahead and we'll just do that now. So I'm going to launch into this and I'm going to specify um, what the issue is. So if I come down here to windshield wipers, I'm going to specify uh, wiper fluid. Whoop. Looks like my caps bar is not working fluid out. That's weird. All right. And um, and then finally, I can uh, specify when I started. So we'll say we started at 137. We'll say that we finished at 3:30 at 3:45, and hit enter. And you can see there it's calculating the. Um, it's calculating the uh, total time I spent on the road at 128 minutes. And then all I need to do from here is just sign off and submit. And so we'll go ahead and send now. Now when I submit, there's some things going on in the background. The first thing is a work order has been generated. And um, that's why I pulled up Workforce a little while ago. So let's take a look at that. So back here in my app, we have a new work order that just came in. It's this operational record. If I click on it, it's automatically been assigned to a mechanic already. So when it came in, figured out what garage it belongs to and who the mechanic is at that garage. Now that mechanic could be a contractor, it could be a state employee, it really could be anybody. But this app lets us assign who's going to do the work and what the work is that we're going to do. And let me just uh, change that to be Price County Garage. And let's update that. And I'll go ahead and save this. And I could set a new due date for this if I want before I give it to the, to the person who's going to be doing the work. Um, but uh, since this is just wiper fluid, this should be a pretty easy fix. So. Um, We'll go ahead and we'll, that's already been assigned. So now that that mechanic, so I'm gonna wear the hat of a mechanic now. I'm in, my, I'm in the garage and I get this new work order and I get it through an app called Workforce. So this is my application that I use to see my work list for the day. So I know what vehicles I'm gonna be working on and I have a general description of what the issue is with the with the vehicle. So I see this new one, oh, the wiper fluids. Oh, I just need to change the wiper fluid. That's easy. So I'll acknowledge it, start it, and I'll just you know report that the wiper fluid's been filled. So you know we I'll refill the wiper fluid and I'll check everything else just to make sure it's okay. Since I'm in under the hood anyway. So we'll hit save, we'll hit finish, and now my work list is empty. So I'm done for the day. And um, back in the office, um, we see that that work order is now complete. So here in the dashboard, uh, the dashboard's keeping track of all that. So you can see there, it just changed from four open work orders to three, and, and the bar chart changed too, because it just picked up that work order was complete. Here, let me just go back real quick and I'll set this to be, um, I'll edit this to be, um, actually I can't do that here. I'll do it in the app. Um, let's look at the completed list and let's change this to be started. All right, so you'll see this dot change again back to the, gray circle with the uh, green point. There it goes, so it's changed. Now, in my dashboard, the dashboard changes to show that that work order is open. It shows that we've got that one in progress job and I can click and I can see exactly 
um, I can click and see exactly which garage it's tied to. So um, Price County briefly flashed there. You kind of have to watch closely to see it flash and um, we see what garage it belongs to. Um, I can also look at the assignments that are out there. And I can see who's doing what. So I see which which mechanics have the most work. I see Tom's got three uh, jobs. Eric's got two. And I see the trucks that are having the issues. So this is going to show me which trucks are having problems, what issues are commonly reported. Um, so we know now what the issues are. We've had two trucks with brake pads replaced. We've heard noises from the axles. We've seen transmission fluids leaking and wiper fluids out. So we see what things are common, and then I can figure out which garages are getting the most issues. So I can see all of this in one place, and that's really helpful because then we can start to uh, maybe move resources around. Maybe we need an extra mechanic at a garage because the workload's higher. Uh, maybe they're having a rougher winter. Um, the point is, is this app lets me manage all of that uh, workflow from the driver, the operator inspecting the vehicle to the mechanics who are repairing the issues that are found on the vehicle. So hopefully that gives you a sense of what's possible today. Um, that's really all I have for demonstrations. I see we've got about 11 minutes left, which is about where I want it to be. Um, I'm gonna pass it back to Terry and I think we'll open it up for questions. Okay, thanks, Eric. That was great. Um, so we do have a number of questions, and let's dive right in. Uh, I guess one of the first questions, uh, the speeds that you're calculating, is that only for the plows down, uh, or is that something that's actually configurable by the by the application? Yeah, so um, the speed that you're seeing in the um, Snowplow Activity Dashboard, you are seeing uh, – you're seeing um, speed, you're seeing the general speed of every plow. So any plow I click on in this list, uh, like here is plow 1051, it's currently stopped at the moment. It's showing zero miles per hour. Um, here is truck 1058 and it is going seven miles an hour on the roadway. So I can see any given plow, how fast it's moving. The alerts, however, are Right now, they're configured for 35 miles an hour and more with plowed down. Um, but I can configure that to be whatever you want. So if you want it to be 40 miles an hour and plow down, if you want to know if the plow is moving 65 miles an hour and the plow is up, we can do that too. So it basically just boils down to what you want. And it can be configured to do it however you want to do it. Okay. Um, so another question, what's the best way to pull in third-party fleet uh, tracking systems like uh, Verizon. Yep. So um, on the back end, I'm using the GeoEvent server uh, technology to pull in the ABL feeds. And in the case of Verizon, we have a connector out of the box. So uh, actually, Network Fleet is the provider for Verizon and a subsidiary of Verizon. And uh, we have a connector for them. Um, most of our most of our um, business partners out there have their own connectors, uh, so you usually just have to ask. In this case, we were working with Precise MRM. They are a subsidiary of Force America. They have their own connector. Um, AT&T has a connector. Um, we've got connectors that we've built for um, other vendors like WebTech, and um, so we've got Generally speaking, uh, you can talk to your vendor, you can talk to us, we can generally find you a uh, connector if it's not publicly available. Okay, um, let's see, there was a question, did you use Python or JSON scripts uh, required to configure this application? Yeah, good question. So no, um, no Python, no JavaScripts, um, all, all done with GeoEvent server. So GeoEvent server has a communication framework that allows me to send emails or uh, text messages, and it's using um, it's using um, geofencing in some cases when the plow enters the snowplow route, and it's looking at that that um, recommendation to see if the spreader's within range, and I'm just doing uh, greater than and less than calculations 
on the fly as the plow enters that geofence and it reports out a message and that message gets sent off through the geovent server to um, you can send it off to people in specific regions so if I just wanted to notify the people in a specific county that one of their plows is speeding I can do that or I can send a, a message to one person who manages all the plows across the entire state so it's really configurable even down to specific people in specific districts or regions um, of the DOT as well. So, all right, and uh, are the reports uh, that you were showing, are those out of the box or do they need to be developed or did you simply configure those, those reports? I simply configured the reports. So um, we generally knew from, from um, performance metrics that many of the DOTs uh, want to maintain. We, we, we looked at a couple of different states and what things were most important to them, and we configured reports basically around those, those concepts and those things that they typically report on. Okay. So that can all be configured. Uh, right. Okay, good. Um, there is a question, and uh, can you integrate labor projections into this application? Uh, that's... I guess I, labor, labor costs and being able yeah, to... Yeah, I, I think so. Um, it's just a matter of knowing. So, you know, let me, let me show you a plow here. Um, looks like um, it's not broadcasting here at the, at the second. Um, uh, when, as soon as I get a plow here that I can click on, one of the uh, items in the data is uh, the driver information. Uh, let's see, there we go. So I am, I can see now this particular data set doesn't have the driver information populated, but, um, but if I have a driver that I can tie back to a labor projection data set, or if I know the plow that drivers are, if Drivers are assigned to a specific plow every time. I can tie back that way. But if I know who the driver of the plow is, I can generally tie back to a labor projection table and mash that data up into these reports as well and show what we're paying per driver and you know how many hours the drivers worked and all that information as well. Okay. Um, and a couple of the questions one is you know how how is the plow positioning brought into the application and then secondly how, how do you verify that the information is actually correct so are there qa qc in terms of being able to calibrate ground speeds and and so forth so yeah so uh, um yeah so we're pulling in from the so in this case we partnered with uh, a company called precise mrm they um, they provide the AVL. Um, they really what they provide is all of the data about the the spreader and the um, plow up and down, all the controller information. And then their parent company, Force America, is reporting out the AVL positioning and the speed and the heading. And so GeoEvent is um, is connecting to that data through a connector that Precise built. And Precise has the specs um, for the, the server feed and the data is written out through, basically through a REST Java endpoint that we pull in and aggregate and we show where those plows are on the ground based on their last location, their last known X and Y location. And um, since speed and heading are attached, I can rotate the symbol to the heading, the direction the plow is traveling in, and then speed is all based on what that what that ADL sensor is reporting. So if it's reporting that's 36 miles an hour, I'm trusting that it's reporting 36 miles an hour. I really don't have a way of verifying. Um, and we are working with cellular uh, GPS sensor data, so it's as only as good as the GPS sensor. So in most cases, these plows work with a GPS sensor that's accurate, plus or minus three meters, which is right around 15 feet. So you'll see sometimes a plow may be 
well off the highway and then another time it's right on the the um snow route line that we projected on top of the road so it just it's hit or miss and um you kind of have to live with it now we do have some there is some work going on at esri to build some tools to do route snap to route uh in real time as these snow plows are coming in but um i don't have anything concrete that i can share in terms of a demo at this point Okay, um, so the next question, is there a way to do this uh, without GeoEvent Server or is GeoEvent uh, a requirement for GeoEvent this? Server is definitely a requirement. Um, that is the special sauce that makes all of the data, um, it makes us, it, it empowers us to aggregate all this data together in one viewer. And that's really, I think, the thing that most organizations have missed for a long time is um, there is no one data provider that can provide all of these data sets together in one view, and this does that. And GeoEvent is a central part of that. In fact, it's what's bringing in the MDSS data. It's going to generate all the alerts when plows are going too fast or they're overspreading, and it can even generate information and alerts when new weather systems pop up. I, I didn't really show it here in this app, but I'm pulling in radar data and um, National Weather Service weather watches. And when those pop in, I can alert somebody that a new alert is issued for Wisconsin or for any state for that matter. Okay. We have, yep. Uh, so we have another question. Is there a tool for assessing the condition of a particular route based on the time since the last equipment pass? Um, when a route turns red, when it's in need of attention or you know, green once equipment has worked the route. So in other words, it would, I guess, in a certain sense, it would show what's been plowed and not plowed based on color. And then uh, over some period of time, then perhaps it would begin to move back into the needing to be plowed status. Yeah, so good question. Is that something that could be configured? Yeah. It, it, it could, but it's gonna require a little bit more processing. Um, that's gonna require some Python or some JavaScript uh, processing. That's gonna to have to happen post-process when this data comes in. Um, because I don't have a way of snapping to route in real time, I would have to go back and snap the points to the AVL points to a route to figure out how, how much of a route, a specific route, a plow has been on and then color code that, you know, and we have to look specifically at plow down and whether or not that route was treated by a plow with a granular or brine or some other material. We'd have to look at all those factors, process that, and then do some time-based degradation. And we could do that through Arcade to show that point as, as it degrades over time, it goes from green to yellow to orange to red perhaps after 12 hours, six hours, and that might depend on the forecast. You know, if it's, if it's snowing an inch an hour versus an inch and a half an hour, we might show that degradation happen quicker, but that would require some post-processing. Okay, well, we've generally run out of time for today. Uh, we will make these slides available, and as you can see on the screen, uh, we do uh, direct you to a number of uh, links that uh, where you can learn more. Um, and uh, we do want to thank all of you for uh, for being on the webinar today. Uh, it will this webinar will be posted on our on the uh, Esri website under uh, uh, transportation and the webinar series. And uh, we, uh, if you do have any further questions, please feel uh, feel free to reach out to either Eric or I, and we'll get back to you. And uh, we do wish all of you uh, really great luck in your uh, snow uh, snow uh, management uh, regimes uh, this coming winter. So again, thanks thanks much.